بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق والمرسلين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم confronting fear these are lessons in life which we learn from our pediatric dental patients better lessons in life which we learn from our pediatric dental patients Emotions, there are a lot of emotions in life. They start off with happiness, anger, um, surprise, or being high like over here, our young man on the left side of the screen, uh, disgusted or fearful. I'm not talking about fear of uh, fire or snakes or actually jumping out of a plane with, uh, without a parachute. This is normal. This is instinctual um, there in our, our being to survive. Humans, humans, yeah, much better. But this way I can fall. Humans or animals, we need this to survive. I'm talking about fear of change in our life. I'm talking about fear of evolving, fear of changing something, fear of a new experience in life, fear of treating yourself like the first presenter. Many different fears in life. Okay? These fears prevent you from evolving. There are two types of persons in, in, in life. There are leaders and there are followers. Okay? Uh, a leader, some people say there's no difference between them. All of us are leaders. No, I, I disagree with that big time. A leader is somebody who has overcome that fear. He's taken the first step to evolve and change. Geniuses take that first step and evolve. And then step forward, I'll end up falling on the floor. One such fear is actually going to a dentist, especially for little kids. It's a terrifying experience. And I'm not talking about fear from a previous negative experience. I'm talking about fear from a new experience. Somebody who's just first time going to a dentist. This experience is a new experience. It's, it's out of their comfort zone. They're going into a, a foreign environment. Let me try this. A foreign environment. Okay. Everybody has a comfort zone. All of us in this room have a comfort zone. This comfort zone could be small or it could be big. Evolve by time. The more you grow, the more experience you get, the bigger the zone becomes or the smaller it becomes. These comfort zones can be entangled amongst each other with your spouse, that part of it is connected with my spouse, or completely engulfed with my parents. I'm part of my parents' comfort zone. As long as I'm within my parents' time, I'm within that big comfort zone. I step out of that comfort zone, my comfort zone shrinks down to like two centimeters. First thing we do to push this comfort zone with a child is educate. The young lady was saying is educate, Google it, look it up, read, evolve, and see what's going on. This way what happens is you gain information and makes that first step easier. Avoid the negative experiences, the first young lady was saying is, yes, you can get a lot of information, a lot of negative stuff, which will actually stop you from, from taking a step forward. But always, like what happens with our kids, we talk to them, we explain to them, as you all studied, we tell, show, and do. So this thing, same thing applies in our own lives. We tell and we show. We read it. Many of you are graduating. You don't know where you're going, what you're doing, what's, what's the next step. You get more information, makes life a little bit easier. Regardless of the fact, it's still fearful, it's still stressful, it still scares you. So what do you do? Sometimes you need a helping hand with you. You need mama around you, Baba, to go and get support from. You get the positive thinking from them. They will provide you with the positive thinking. They don't need to say anything. It's just being there, their vibrations, the positive thinking will help you. Just holding your hand, feeling the warm sensation of their hands in your hands helps out a lot. Many of you need, I, I cannot think right. Let me go to my father and he will help me out. Or as Dr. Bargi said, go to my mentor, speak to my mentor. He will sort of guide you or just help you or just being there will help you a lot. 
Sometimes you need more than just a mentor or somebody big around you. You need a little brother. You need a friend. You need a, a smiling face just around you. That smiling face makes you forget about everything. That one small smiling face over here. This little boy needed his brother. Is his brother going to help him? No. Is he going to stop the pain? No. Is he going to be there to stop anything bad going to happen to him? No. But he's there. And he provided a lot of support to bring back Hamudi within that comfort zone. Sometimes what happens is all of us need to cry. Hamu, uh, over here, Tariq needs to cry. And Khaif can cry. Three minutes of solid crying will make that child feel better. I don't stop children from crying. Let them cry. That three minutes of pure crying and tears makes life much easier. Sometimes what happens is you might have a father or mother you can go to or a spouse. Just sit and cry or get angry and just release all that tension inside. And then after three minutes, five minutes, 10, 15 minutes, if you're fortunate, maybe an hour as well of crying, you get up, I'm fine, nothing is wrong. Some people don't have that privilege. So what they end up going is they end up going to the, their, to the haram or to um, whatever they pray to. They go to the haram, sit in front of the Kaaba and sit and cry and cry and cry. Three minutes of crying, five minutes of crying till there are no more tears left. Nothing is left over there. You get up, wipe your tears and you continue. Did anything actually inspire you at that moment? No, but you got it out of your system. That crying actually helped you out. Sometimes what we need to do is, uh, I jumped a slide over here. Uh, sometimes what we need to do is we need to control our physiology. What do I mean by that? Uh, Tariq over here, he's so scared, he's panicking, his heart rate has gone up, he's breathing erratically, and I cannot get to him. He's having a difficult time communicating with me. What I need to do is I need to get to his psychology, physiology. I need to work on his physiology. I need to control his, his heart rate, his breathing, so he can control his fear. So that's why many times what I do is with kids, I count. I put my hands on the chest. I get a very good feel of their heart rate, how they're doing. And then I count very slowly, regularly. 10, going down. Slowly, slowly, slowly. What happens is with Tariq, his breathing is controlled. And when his breathing is controlled, his heart rate comes down. This way he can confront his fear in a much better way. We do the same thing. I came up here. Luai came up over here and spoke. Before he starts speaking, his heart is beating like 130, 160 beats per minute. He takes a deep breath. One, two. This regulation of his breathing helps him out. Sometimes you don't need to breathe. You need to meditate a little bit. Control your physiology. Once you can control your physiology, you'll have control on your fear. Some people, when they're confronted with fear, like a friend over here, I always show my kids a mirror to actually confront the fear of the needle. Some kids cannot take it, and they blank out. They just zone out. They just go into a, a, a no-land place. That's good. Go to that no-land place. Think out. Just go out of blank out. At that moment when you blank out, you just concentrate what you need to do, and you finish it. Okay. Uh, some people actually, when they're confronted with fear, they need distraction. It's fine, distraction. Some friends over here actually start counting mathematics. They calculate things. One plus one equals two, two plus two equals four. It's a distraction. They're distracting themselves from that fearful event. Okay, over here, uh, I forgot the young girl's name, but she actually started playing a game. Yeah, play a game. Watch a movie. The other way of doing distracting yourself, or the other term I would use over here, disassociating yourself from that fearful event, is you start thinking about positive things. You put yourself in a different environment. Yes, I'm physically over here. I'm physically standing in front of a kind doctor, and he's going to give me an exam. I'm scared. And you know what? I'm thinking about al-Bahar. Oh, I'm going to get on a jet ski, and I'm going to be putting my suntan lotion. I'm wearing my sunglasses. I'm thinking positive thoughts. I'm thinking in a good way. 
or I'm thinking about my father, my positive person who helps me in life. So all of these positive things get you out of that stressful environment. Some people uh, self-inspire um, themselves. Yes, I can do it. I'm doing it. I want to finish this. I have to succeed. I have to show everybody I am solid. Okay? So he's watching and he's encouraging himself all the way through. Very few people are like that, but people are like that. Some people thrive on, on stress. They enjoy it. They want that. They're, they're an adrenaline junkies. Yes, I did it. I can do it. I want to wash. And, and they love it. But it's, it's one of the steps which you need to take to evolve. We go back to Tariq, which I jumped about crying. We go back to the crying part. Yes, do your crying. Cry it out. Let it out. Uh, it helps you heal. Okay? You cry towards mom. You cry towards dad. You find a shoulder you can cry on. Okay? That will help you a lot. Going to the haram, going to the masjid. Ramadan, Ashra wa Akhri, you sit and cry. It, it just cleanses you. It gets all that stress. Yes, you don't see any new picture. You don't see anything which helps you solve the problem. Okay? But it's out of your system. And then you're happy and you're back again to work. Okay? Uh, very few people in the world have the privilege and, and the chance of connecting with God with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These people get inspiration and guidance from God. They listen, they talk, and they depend on God in a big way. Uh, it makes life much easier. You depend on God one way or another, and it will help you out. It will take steps forward. It's all messed up over here. Sorry about that. Check your slides. Okay. Um, in simple English, in simple Arabic, um, if I have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I have trust in His judgment, I can take those steps forward. I can stand and I say, yes, I can do it. He will guide me through it. So this is one of the main things which you need to do is, is control that. So out of this thing, Control your physiology. Make sure you can control it. Make sure you, whenever you approach that, make sure your heart and breathing rate is controlled. Educate yourself. Learn. Read. Google it. The more you know about the new position or new job or new career you're doing, the easier it is. If you're just confronting it without any education, it makes life very difficult. Uh, find a positive help to you. A person who can actually inspire you. You don't need somebody to actually tell you. Yes, finding somebody who actually will tell you one, two, three, this thing goes back into researching. Okay, this is part of research. I'm not talking about research. I'm talking about somebody who's just there for emotional support. You need that. Okay, and finally, trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take your first step and everything will go smooth. Thank you very much.